Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to cover how I would typically set up Manjaro Linux for gaming, and I'm going to cover the installation of drivers, kernels, as well as some software that I typically use, such as Steam and Lutris. So, step one is to always update your system. Now, it doesn't matter what operating system you use, you could be using Windows, Mac OS, Android, or even iOS, you always need to keep your system up to date. So in Manjaro, this is incredibly easy to do this. You want to load up the app remove software application, go to the update tabs, and then just see if there's any updates to install. In my particular case, I've been a good boy, so I've got it up to date, but you might have some updates to install, so it's a matter of clicking them, applying, and then if you do get a prompt, restart your system. So step two is driver installation. Both Nvidia and AMD GPUs are supported on Linux. So for example, if you've got an AMD GPU, for game at least, you'll be using the Mesa or the user space drivers, and these are installed by default in Manjaro. So in theory, if you've kept your system up to date, you're already running the latest available drivers for that particular hardware. Now, if you've got Nvidia hardware, it's a little bit different, as you'll be using the Nvidia proprietary driver, which is not typically installed by default. However, Manjaro does make it relatively easy to install this. We need to launch the hardware configuration, and then click the button at the top here that says auto install proprietary driver. Click yes to confirm and type your password in. Once the settings are finished, reboot your system. So step three is the Linux kernel installation. So roughly every couple of months or so, there is a new release of the Linux kernel. And this often includes new hardware support as well as some new features. In most cases, you'll probably find install the latest kernel is not gonna magically improve your game performance. But there is one exception to the rule, and that's if you've got brand new AMD hardware. As it's not unheard of for new kernel releases in the future to improve performance over time for that particular type of hardware. However, in most cases, especially if you're running NVIDIA or you've got older AMD hardware, you'll probably find that the kernel version is largely irrelevant. Now, Manjaro does include an application called Kernel that will allow you to add and remove all available supported kernels. So the interface is simple, to install a new kernel you fully enough click the install button and to remove one you click the remove button. However, once you've messed around and chosen which kernels you want to stick with, then make sure to reboot your system and you will boot into the, the most recently configured kernel. So step 4 is to install Steam. So there's no doubt that Steam is the biggest game store available on the PC platform. But the good news is that Steam is 100% supported in Linux as well. Plus, if you enable Proton within Steam, you'll now be able to play a larger number of games that were previously exclusive to Windows on Linux as well. Now, of course, not every game will work, and the usual suspects for games that don't work are ones that use kernel-level attitudes such as EAC or BattleEye, or even some newer titles that use DirectX 12. And a great website where you can check compatibility of Steam library on your system is if you use a website such as ProtonDB. And the way it works is you effectively search for the game that you want to see if it runs, check out how people have reported it running, but just remember just to take the rating system with a pinch of salt. So in Manjaro, Steam is installed by default. So all you need to do is launch it, sign to your account, and then you'll be using Steam. So by default, you will only be able to install games that have native Linux versions or have been whitelisted as Proton compatible. However, it is possible to enable Proton across the board for your entire Steam library. So the way that you do that is you go to the top here, go to Steam, go to Settings, Steam Play, and make sure you've ticked both Enable Steam Play for supported titles, as well as Enable Steam Play for all other titles. One other option you can tick under the Shared Pre-Caching is to enable Shared Pre-Caching and allow background processing of Vulkan shaders. Ticking both of these options will mean that when you're playing a game, it will be less likely to do any stuttering because all of these shader caches have already been compiled ahead of time. Either way, click OK, and then reboot Steam to apply everything. From here, it's just a matter of clicking the game you want to install, clicking the big install button, and then following the process. So step five is to install Lutris. Although Steam is the biggest game store, you might have some games that are outside of the Steam ecosystem. For example, you might have games developed by Blizzard or even Epic Game Stores. And although you can technically add these games to Steam and then run them using Proton, this isn't exactly recommended. Instead, you can use a third-party application called Lutris, 
and this is effectively a universal launcher for a wide range of game stores and it also has support for emulators for older game consoles as well. In Manjaro you can install Lutris using the add remove software application. All you need to do is simply search for it within the search bar, click on the entry, click install and then click apply at the bottom and then apply once more to confirm the installation. Once the installation is finished, launch Lutris. So the interface of Lutris is simple but powerful. For example, to install a game, you want to click on Lutris under Sources, click the option that says Community Installers, and then search for the game that you want to install. So for example, if I want to, if I want to install, uh, shall we say, StarCraft 2, I'd search for StarCraft. And then choose the option that corresponds to it. So in this case, StarCraft 2, click Install, Install once more, Install, Continue. And at this point, Lutris will continue and automate the installation process. Once the process is completed, click close on there, go to games, right click on the game and press play to launch it. So at this stage you're pretty much all set, however there are some optional GitHub projects that I personally tend to use that might be worth you looking at. The first one is Feral Game Mode. Now this is a little daemon that, that uh, once configured will, will allow you to optimise your system by setting your CPU government to performance, tweaking the IO priority, adjusting the process niceness, setting up kernel scheduling and many other little tweaks. Now you as an end user are required to actually enable some of these tweaks as not all of them are enabled by default. The second tool that I use is Mango HUD and this is a Vulkan and OpenGL overlay that allows you to monitor FPS, hardware consumption, CPU slash GPU load and many other things. It's basically the latest equivalent of Afterburner's server overlay that's available on Windows. And if you want a GUI to manage Mango HUD, as well as a couple of other little tools that are available, then I recommend have a look in it, Goverlay. So with that, you've now set up Manager for gaming so that you can play both Windows developed games as well as Linux native games. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And if you did find this video helpful, then please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye now.